Thanks for tuning in. I've got a very good memory for voices. Very good memory. Okay, I'm boasting, but you know, I've listened to hundreds, maybe thousands of atheist experience calls. And, you know, to a fairly high degree of accuracy, if I hear one caller who's called maybe once or twice, and then several years later, I hear that caller, I think I know who that is. And I can go back to a previous episode and pick them out, even if they're given a different name, even if they were a Christian before, now they're an atheist, etc. So I'm fairly sure, I'm like sort of 95 degrees certain, um, that this caller here, going back to I think about 2015 or 2014, he's called several times, Andrew, Josh, he's given his name as, and let's have a listen to him, and then we'll go to the call that came in more recently, within the last year or so, and you can tell me your opinion. Plus, something amusing happens in the actual call, but let's listen to a minute of this first. Hello? Hey, you're on with Matt, Tracy, and Chris. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing pretty well. That's good. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to ask uh, why you uh, don't believe. In what? In uh, God. Who wants to take it? Okay, I'm sorry, it's just a short clip, but let's let's now go to the uh, recent um, call. Okay, so he's calling in more recently, within the last year or so, and he's calling himself Tate from Arizona. So let's let's have a listen and tell me what you think, but also obviously the content of the call. In Arizona, pronouns are he, him. What do religious people mean when they talk about objective or subjective morality? Is that, is that the question you've been waiting for? Uh, yes, um, I myself am an atheist too, so I, whenever, uh, I always get into, like, um, kind of, like, arguments with religious people, I always, like, bring up, well, how do you know something's objectively good, and how do you know something's not, like, they, they always like to go to the objective morality arguments, and it's kind of hard to understand what they mean by that, because, like, they just bring, like, and I've heard people talk about it, touch on that a lot, but it's just kind of, like, hard to understand, because there's, like, so many things you gotta understand. Yeah, and, and so I'll give you about the quickest answer I can, which is, A, uh, if you want to find out what they mean by something, you you got to ask them. I will say that quite frequently, everybody gets confused about this because um, they try to equate objective with absolute, and so there's a confusion there. All the difference between objective and subjective is, is subjective would be it's the product of a mind. It is just somebody's opinion that murder is immoral. Objective means that it doesn't matter what anybody's opinion is. This is actually immoral, independent. Everybody in the world could think it's right, and it could turn out to be wrong. Um, and all we're doing in that sense is comparing the consequences of somebody's action to a goal. Now, we can disagree about the goals, just like we could disagree about the rules for different games. I use chess as an analogy quite often. But for the moral question, it's either if it's just a product of your mind, then like to, to go with the big Lebowski route, which I'm not a fan of and I'm probably going to get wrong, but it's like, that's just like your opinion, dude. Uh, and so that's their objection. The real truth here is that when yeah. theists object to secular morality, every objection that they can, every objection they've ever launched to secular morality, yeah. they can't solve. I because their, their thing is, look, what, what would a secular humanist point to as a source for morality? And for me, I like to point to well-being and it's not, you know, robust. It's not all this again, but, uh, but they're like, oh, well, why on earth is that the standard? And I don't think that, I think it's this, just the standard we agreed on that we care about our well-being. It seems absurd to not care about well-being, but nobody has to. There's nothing in the universe declaring I must care about well-being, but there's also nothing that says I must care what their God says or what they say their God says, because I don't even know what their God says because their God won't spend a minute talking to me. All I know is what they say. And so if they can say, here's what God says is moral and you shouldn't wear short skirts or have sex with people outside of marriage, I can say, well, I don't care what your God says. I'm looking at actual fucking harm here. And uh, you can look down at me and say I'm immoral all day long for having sex outside of marriage. Um, but I'm going to say it's a good thing and that you should get your busy, busy nose out of my business. And until your God comes down and tells me that it's wrong and why it's wrong, in which case I'll correct your God, too. 
uh, I don't care what your view is. Yeah. Um, I also find it to be like a very retarded argument as well. Cause like, okay. It, okay. Stop. I absolutely despise and will not allow that word to be used here. Well, I must say that, I mean, for people with learning difficulties, it's quite a serious business. And obviously that word is a slur. So very surprised to hear him use that. It's, it's a slip. I never heard him use it before in any of his, his other calls. He always seemed to be fairly reasonable. But he was a theist then, and now he's an atheist. And what do you think? Do you think that it's the same person? I might actually play, play part of that call again in a moment, but uh, let's just see how this call ends. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I understand it can be used in a, in a clinical sense of retarding progress, etc., but... Uh, it drives me bonkers. And so let's just, let's go with, it's not a particularly rational. It's not a particularly sound. It's any number of things without going to like slurs. Yeah. Please forgive me about that. Uh, sure. Well, the caller has uh, implored Matt to forgive him. So, and he's been forgiven. So um, I suppose we can move on. But I do find it to not be, I just, find it to be illogical and not really with good reason because like well that's strange uh tate or josh or andrew or whoever you are because um that's not what you were saying eight years ago you were actually arguing for that position and now you've got the temerity to come onto the atheist experience and not even say that actually i've called before and i used to be a theist now i'm an atheist and this is the reason why uh, and he just appears out of the blue because believe me, I've listened to every single episode since those times. And he hasn't been, he had a little run of about three or four calls. And then he vanished until now. And now he's come back and he's not even acknowledging, well, I was a theist, now I'm an atheist. And he's using slurs against people with learning difficulties as well. Because their purpose is like, for a God to exist, there has to be like a difference to manifest or to detect right and wrong. And well, the reason we have um, objective morality, well, the reason we have that is because uh, cause if, we if we didn't have the law, for example, then if we just allowed murder, then we would cease to exist, for example. Well, I don't know if that's the case. I don't really think it's the case at all. I think that uh, if we didn't have a law against murder, obviously the world would be a much more dangerous place. But I still, I, it would make a minor dent in the world's population. But I don't think the human race would stop to exist just if there was uh, no laws against murder. Oh, just coming back to what he said about retarded. Of course, Matt said quite rightly that um, you can talk, you know, if you're writing a science paper, you can say that, I don't know, the, uh, the progress in the development of the uh, Hadron Collider was retarded due to lack of funding, you know, that kind of thing or something like that, um, um, you know, which is, is not a slur, but in the way that Josh used it, he says he finds it a retarded argument. He meant it in the sense that only a dumb person with learning difficulties would make such an argument. So it is a slur in the sense that he made it. But uh, let's just go on, listen to the end of the call. But... Oh. I don't know. Uh, I, I've done the best I can to explain the difference bet between that. You might have to talk to them about what, about what they mean. Um, but I appreciate it. I got to get to a couple more calls real quick before we end. So thanks, Tate. All right. Yeah. So let's just have a quick listen to the other call, and then we will draw a final conclusion. Is Tate, Josh, and Andrew or not? Okay, here we go. Just 10 seconds of this. Hey, you're on with Matt, Tracy, and Chris. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing pretty well. That's good. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to ask uh, why you uh, don't believe. In okay, so that's it. I'm fairly, you know, I'm fairly confident it's the same person. It's, he certainly sounds very, he, he sounds too similar for it not to be him, both in terms of his accent and the way his, uh, the inflections of his voice, uh, the tone and everything, the timbre of his voice. I do, I do think that it is the same person. I actually think he was far more articulate when he called eight years ago 
Um, that would be quite sad if atheism has actually reduced his level. Or is he a sham atheist? Was he just simply calling in to test, um, you know, this mock atheist uh, uh, opinion on theist arguments for the objectivity of morality? Was he just coming on to sort of test the water and present himself as an atheist? It's really, it's really strange. Maybe some of you guys who sort of monitor things more closely than I do, maybe you've heard some other call-in shows and perhaps you could enlighten me. I, I mean, maybe there was a moment when he came on and I just missed it and he said, oh, actually, it's Josh Andrew I used to call years ago. I've now uh, deconverted. I'm now an atheist. So I'd be really interested to know. Okay, thanks for calling. Bye for now.